How to create a Telegram bot? It's a very simple process. Either you can use your Telegram app or website and search for Botfather. For this tutorial, I'm going to use the Telegram web. Go to your search and search for Botfather. Make sure you click on the one which has this verified symbol, then click on the start. In the Telegram bot, any text that begins with a slash is considered a command. Later on in this video, we will explore how to make custom commands for our bot. For now, we need to create a new bot by clicking on New Bot and giving it a name. Let's name our bot Sync Google Photos. Great. Now let's create a username for our bot. It is similar to an Instagram handle. It needs to be unique for that bot to identify and must always end with the word bot. Let's give a username and in return it gives a token. It's important to save this token in a safe place as it is the key to controlling the bot. Congratulations, we have successfully created our first bot. To access it, simply click on this link. Please note that hitting start will not do anything as we have not connected a server to listen to the bot yet. Let's begin by setting up our local node Botier's repository and connecting our bot to the local server. As we have an empty folder, we need to initiate npm by running npm init on this folder. Now, we need to install two packages, Axios and Express, which are essential for this project. Axios is a popular library used to make HTTP calls, while Express is used to create our basic node server. Once we have installed these packages, we can create an index.js file. To start the server, we need to add the basic code that imports Express, defines the port, 4040, and starts the Express server. We then respond to all post and get requests by sending hello and listening to the app on the port. We can add a command in package JSON to start the server by calling it start node index js. Lastly, we start the server and see it running on port 4040. Now we can hook up our bot to the node server. We need a tool called ngrok to achieve this. When our Telegram bot receives a message, it calls a POST API. Telegram only calls HTTPS protocol API, and the APIs should be in the public domain. However, our local node server is currently in the HTTP domain. To bridge this gap, we use ngrok, which creates an HTTPS server that the Telegram bot can communicate with and redirect that traffic to our local node server. To install ngrok, we must first sign up. Download the ngrok application that matches our operating system and extract it to our desired location. Afterward, we can connect our account to our authorization token. For that, just copy this token and go to your terminal and change to the directory where ngrok is copied. In my case, it's in Documents, Tutorials and Paste that command and execute. If you face this issue, just use the complete path and then paste the command which we copied there. If you see that auth token is saved to the ngrok.oml file, then you're good to go. Again, to verify, we can do the same thing. Just go to Documents, Tutorials and then ngrok and just type help. If you see this, ngrok is working properly. Currently, the local host is running on port 4040, where our node application is operating. To connect this to ngrok, we only need to specify the path and indicate HTTP along with the port number, which is 4040 in our case. All it is trying to do is it's forwarding whatever HTTPS request coming to this domain to this local host which is in our machine. To test if it functions, Simply enter the URL into your browser. You will see that it connects to our local server and returns a hello message. Now let's discuss how we can connect our Telegram bot. Make sure to copy the HTTPS request. In the Telegram documentation, they provide a method called webhook, which allows us to redirect incoming requests for a Telegram bot to a specific URL. To access this method, Go to code.telegram.org and look for set webhook. Before diving into the API, let me explain the structure of Telegram APIs. 
Every Telegram API follows the same structure, api.telegram.org slash bot token method. The token is obtained from our bot father, and the method we want to use is set webhook. There are other methods available, such as sending messages, photos, and videos. To update the webhook, go to Postman and input the token and the URL. which is the ngrok URL with HTTPS. When we hit this API, it should function properly. Great news, the bot hook has been successfully updated. But how can we confirm this? Let's take a look at our code. Whenever there is a post message, we are currently responding with just hello. Instead, let's log what we are receiving and restart our server. Let's go to our Telegram bot and send a message. We should be able to see it here. As you can see, we have received a message on port 4040, which includes the message ID, chat, date, and text, in this case, hi. This means we are successfully receiving messages from the bot. Let's now figure out how we can respond back. Important note, whenever you restart your ngrok service, it will provide you with a new URL. Therefore, Make sure to update the URL using the Postman API. Also, I have updated the code editor to make it more user-friendly. The terminal is now located on the right side, the file editor on the left, and the center displays the code. So far, we have set up our node server and successfully connected it to our local bot. Now, let's add some code to enable proper communication with the bot. We will create a controller and add a library to handle all our Telegram requests and make API calls. Let's create a file called Axios, which will be responsible for all the API calls. We will import the Axios library and our bot token. This is the base structure of all Telegram APIs, which require a bot token. We will create an Axios instance and export it, exposing two methods, get to make all the get calls and post to make any HTTP requests. Now, let's create a telegram.js file to communicate with the Telegram bot. We need a function to send messages back to the bot. This function will make a get call using Axios and the send message method available in the Telegram API. This method requires two parameters, the chat ID and the text. How do we get the chat ID? Let's go back to our Telegram bot and send a message. Once we receive a response object, we can locate the chat ID in the message object within the body. This unique ID distinguishes each chat room. Let's say, when we add this bot to some other group, that group has its own chat ID. The message object also contains the text of the message we want to send back to the Telegram bot. To achieve this, we import the Axios instance and create a method called handle message, which handles every message we receive from the Telegram bot. The handle message method takes the message object and extracts the message text. If the message starts with a slash, it is recognized as a command. We remove the slash and record the rest of the string as the command. For instance, if we send the command start, the text will appear as slash start. Removing the slash leaves us with the command start. We can then handle this command and send a greeting message to the bot using the send message method we previously created. If the command is unknown, we simply send a generic message. So far, we created two methods. One is handle message and another one is send message. So handle message is responsible to handle every message and send message simply sends any message which we want to send to the Telegram bot. Let's export this handle message. In controllers, let's create an index file and let's import the handle message method which we created earlier. In this file, Let's create a method called handler. The primary responsibility of this handler is to take all the input requests that we are getting to this server and handle them appropriately. For now, take the body from the request and whenever there is a body that exists, simply send that body to the handle message method and return it. The handle message method always returns an Axios instance, which is an asynchronous operation. 
Therefore, we await the resolution of the send message method before returning it. Finally, we hook the handler method to the request in our server starting file. Instead of responding with hello post, we pass the request to the handler to take care of all the necessary actions. Let's begin by restarting our bot and sending a message with hi. However, we're not receiving any traffic on the server, which means there may be an issue with Ngrok. Whenever you see this type of message, try killing and restarting the app and updating the new URL via Postman. Once we receive a response from the bot, we can see that it is responding with hi. When we send any other command, it simply responds with I don't know. Let's review what's happening. If we send a message that is not a command, the request is sent to the handler, which takes the message and sends it to the handle message method. Handle message then checks if the message starts with a slash. If not, it simply sends the message back to the user. If it does start with a command, the command is taken out, and if it start, a message saying, Hi, I'm a bot, is sent. Otherwise, it sends a message saying, I don't know that command. Now, let's create our own commands using the botfather. This will give us additional help and a UI to view available commands. We can set our own commands by selecting Set Command and choosing our bot. Then we can send the commands we want to update in the format of command name description. For example, we can set two commands, test and surprise, which pulls a random photo from our Google Photos account. Once the commands are updated, we can type slash and see our available commands. We can also click the menu to view the commands. In the next tutorial, we will learn how to implement these commands by handling the surprise case. Ideally, when we hit them at the end of the day, it comes as a command to our bot by using this text. All we have to do is handle this case here with surprise and return something out of it. Let's see in the next tutorial how we can implement these things. So far, we have covered creating a Telegram bot, setting up a Node.js project, connecting the bot for local development and creating custom commands. Thank you for tuning in and we'll see you in the next tutorial.